Please tune in. All the venues in Australia, because I started out there, but I've never played arena shows before. Mm. So that was pretty huge. That's like, you know, 30,000 people there screaming mm. and so on. And with Billy, I appreciate her fans because they're really supportive. Mm. We come in on like 30 minutes or an hour before her show. So people who are here to see Billy are here mm. to see you. Yes. I remember doing like a Kendrick support. And like I went on maybe three hours before him. Mm. So, you know. People just getting to the the venue, yeah. looking for their seats and all. But with this one, it was like we're here to see both of you, mm. and it was really beautiful for um, my band to get to see an arena show, to experience something different, and be like, hey, we can actually do this. I pride myself in doing more than just a live DJ show, mm. you shout, I shout sort of thing. I'm bringing a story to you on stage, and this just opened me up to. You know, bringing my performances and making them bigger and better. So it was an amazing experience, and she has the best fans. All oh, right. Uh, uh, so how is how exactly did you get picked? Uh, was it a conversation between you two as artists, or was it a label to label thing? It was a booking agent thing. Mm -hmm. So um, my booking agent sort of sees what uh, artists fit best for me. Okay. And um, they picked me out. I wasn't in Australia at the time, so that was wild. I was in Zambia. They picked me out to go back to Australia. And um, yeah, it was a booking agent thing. It became a label thing. And then Billy signed it off. I don't know if her personally, mm -hmm. I personally signed off all my supports, but her team signed off. Okay. Yeah. So anything new you picked up while you were touring with her? I know, you know, doing arenas and all that, seeing how she maybe controls the crowd. What, what did you pick up from uh, that? Uh, she has really good st uh, stage presence. Mm. Um, she really t tells a story through her show, which is what I think as well. Um, yeah, she's an amazing person as well. We really didn't get to see her until the end of the tour because it is a world tour situation. Again, touring is really hectic and crazy, but for me, my experience was beautiful, especially with the crowd. It was a, a beautiful experience for me. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Um, I want us to look at, uh, you know, another one of your wins, which is your song Never Forget being used as promotional material for the new Black Panther movie. Mm -hmm. Take us through how this happened because uh, the first time we hit it, I, yeah. I know that me and the CEO were in the same car and we made a video and we were screaming like, <laughs> It we was wildly <laughs> screaming. How did um, that happen? Well, the Black Panther team had everything set up for their movie, their soundtrack. Everything was already done beforehand. Because mm. this is a four-year movie in the making, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's also a tribute movie and soundtrack. It's right. a tribute situation and it's going to Chadwick. I, on the other hand, was working on As Above, So Below with our team, Mac 44 and so on. And... um we were touring in the States and one of their music supervisors was at our show. Mm. So we're in LA, we're doing our show, not knowing who's there, just doing our thing. And this in Park was actually in the crowd that night. Mm. It was really mm. beautiful. Crazy. And Mwanjo was shaking. <laughs> <laughs> you, ju you just have to be like, okay, cool. Like these are amazing people. Mm. You know, these are people who inspire you. But I think I've learned from my interactions uh, with Lauren that, um, you know, it's a human to human thing at the end of the day. So, uh, yeah, so, and this Lauren Hill? was the, Lauren Hill, sorry. Mm, there we go. Uh, that drop. is like, no, nah, no, nah, <laughs> like, because that's the, the biggest, you know, star I've met. So yeah, yeah, that's crazy. To, to be amongst someone who's, um, inspired you so much, it's mm. so easy to be like, oh my God, this is God, yeah. you know? Yeah, yeah. And, uh, I think the third time in, I was able to talk to my peer mm. and she created that atmosphere for me. So I try and, like, encourage Monje. To like okay yeah. mm. I know I understand that <laughs> yeah. these are people who yeah. inspire us but you're doing amazing and he's here to see you right. so that's dope too right um so yeah so we were playing our show in LA my beautiful band Zambian band we've gone global we're doing our thing mm -hmm. and uh the music supervisor for Black Panther is in the crowd and we don't know this and I don't even know that I've met her so mm. I meet people backstage, you know, right. yeah, yeah, mm. cool, thank you for coming, hope you enjoyed it, leave it at that. Um, and then we get a message, um, we get a message after, after the trailer drops. Mm. So she says she's the one 
who actually pushed for Never Forget to be on uh, the uh, the trailer. Mm-hmm. So everything was done. They had done all their stuff. They had made their tribute songs and whatever. But she's the one who said this song would fit here, mm-hmm. and she pushed for it to be on the trailer. So that's. How that happened And right. you know My management uh, And everybody was like Yo this is crazy That this is happening Because they've already Prepared what they're Going to do for the mm-hmm. For the movie But the song stuck out And the story stuck out To her when we Performed it live And usually I'm Explaining what the song Is about Where right. we're from As a band What our mm-hmm. culture And our music Means to us And so I think mm-hmm. That inspired her enough To push our song mm-hmm. Okay That's how it happened That's how this, the story <laughs> Went there So there was a whole lot of talk when the track list of the official soundtrack to the movie came yeah. out and your song was on, on the list so yeah. when people heard the song in the trailer it was yeah. the song will be on the soundtrack so it's clear up why this didn't happen and did you know this would be the case ahead of time well yeah because <laughs> she saw the song at a live performance like i said everything else was already prepared right and this is if you listen to the soundtrack it's a tribute soundtrack this is for chadwick you yeah. know and i mean never forget talking about some of the greatest the greatest <laughs> like how does that send any tribute to anyone that was specific right. for me that was specific for my album mm-hmm. um i was just glad that our song was powerful enough for them to Put aside the plans they already had for Black Panther and be like, this has to be on the trailer. Mm-hmm. That to me is a huge W. That's a huge win, mm-hmm. especially because I'm a huge fan of Marvel, that whole universe, um, and Black Panther itself and seeing black superheroes. So that to me already was like, this is a huge win. And I had mm-hmm. known before that this was for the trailer alone. Mm-hmm. I mean, they sent the trailer to us to approve. Right. And I was like, this is dope, this is wild mm-hmm. Let's go for it and, and it was done Okay. So for me, I'm super happy mm-hmm. And I'm also happy that it's connected me to people Where there'll be more of these opportunities right. for me So right. I studied music for visual media um, in San Francisco So okay. being a, um, a, you know, a film editor and you know, a music editor Has always been part of the dream So this is just going to open more doors This is like a young timing thing from God Like mm. you might want to change direction to film now And I'm like okay cool no, So a it's a big mm. I might do yeah. my thing I've been I've always been influenced by visuals And telling people stories through visuals So this might open the door more for me Alright so, still, so. still on the track list Sampa um, After the track list came out There, there was some slander on social media uh, That came your way Do you feel Zambians have embraced you as their own? I mean I came here three years ago re um you know re shaped my life to um be based in here for th- uh, for three years because of the mm. pandemic um it wasn't a goal to do the album here it wasn't the goal to do any music here mm. and after a while australia had its border issues and i decided to stay here and do my album so i set some goals for myself mm. to work with people who have always wanted to work with that goes done mm, right. uh, to bring uh, the culture of my country and our music on a global stage. That goes done, mm-hmm. um, and to be able to say that there is a Zambian woman who's doing things globally, mm. and that goes done. Mm. Those were my three goals. I never set any goal for anyone to love me mm-hmm. or embrace me because mm. that's never a goal for me as an artist to be like. My work is not doing well because people don't love me. Like, mm. that is not a major goal for right. me. Right. I set my goals and I'm done with my goals. And mm. whether people love it or not, that's that's the people thing in it. Mm. Like, it, it has nothing to do with me. But see, when you're carrying the flag on stage, on global <laughs> stages, it should make you feel a type of way when you see that to- sort of talk on social media. No, because I'll be a Zambian with or without love. Mm. You understand? Like, the fact that I'm a Zambian person has nothing to do with if anyone op- approves that or not mm-hmm. like i will always be one right. so yeah okay now you were at the world premiere of black panther wakanda forever oh, okay. uh we hosted that with uh, the sister station uh quick fm yeah so after watching the movie did you see why your song was picked why that lady was the music director was pushing I... so hard to have your song be in the in the trailer yeah i mean she saw us live mm-hmm. she loved it so i know why it was picked i know why it was part of the vision I actually didn't finish watching 
um the movie mm-hmm. so no spoilers please okay i got i got a bit sick on that day so i'm trying to watch that this week because everybody's talking about mm. well the ending of the movie and i'm like no 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 please don't say anything so i have to watch that this week before mm. someone spoils it for me but um yeah, I see, again, I see why they chose the song. Right. Never Forget is a pretty powerful song. Even just without the trailer, the immense, um, you know, it's it's made an impression on people globally. Mm. The people who've connected with us off of that song alone, without right. it being on the trailer, that's before anything drops. So I see why people would resonate with it. Um, yeah, and, and yeah. I'm happy about that. It's, it's really beautiful that this has happened to our music. We're even able to say that a Zambian song is on a trailer mm-hmm. or a Marvel movie. That mm-hmm. conversation didn't happen a year from now. So right. the fact that it's happening now is pretty huge as well. We're talking about being, you know, Zambians appreciating you and how the song was picked and all that. You lived in, uh, you've lived in Zambia, you've lived in Botswana, you've lived in uh, Australia, among others. How does the mashup of countries affect your perspective on music and which one do you identify with the most? Mm, yeah, I was raised in Botswana, uh, raised between uh, Botswana and Zambia when I was growing up, based in Australia for some time. It opens up your perspective, you know, um, broadens your perspective to more than the place that you're in. Mm-hmm. Um, you get to see the different characteristics of these different people, mm. how that inspires you. Um, and you just pick on different things you know i i think if i didn't leave botswana if i didn't leave zambia i wouldn't have seen how different industries do things outside of zambia Mm. i wouldn't have seen that you know my goal musically is bigger than where i am i always use the analogy i was a sprinter so i always use the analogy of being a sprinter and being the fastest in your school and thinking that that's it mm. like you're the fastest in the mm. school you're the one mm, then and then you, you go to the it. meet <laughs> <laughs> you go to the meet and see everyone who's the fastest in their schools yeah. and then you're like oh I'm not actually yeah. the one yeah. you know and so for me it was like oh okay there's more I can broaden my music I can broaden my knowledge mm. I can build myself as an artist my confidence um, and I think that was the privilege of being in these different spaces um, mm. And it's just opened my mind up to, to more And that's sort of the mindset I, and mentality I try and share with others Is mm. it's dope that our music is, is dope here mm. I want our music to be dope everywhere right. okay. Because that's how I think of my music Like I want mm. my music to be known globally okay. um, mm. So it's really helped me uh, hone into that perspective Which one do you identify with the most? As in country yeah, uh, yeah. Both yeah. Zambia and Botswana I was mm. raised in Botswana mm. So the certain phrases that I say that you'll be like, okay, that's that's yeah, not from here. Yeah, yeah. Um, and then obviously grew up with Zambian people. They were raised t- speaking in their language and mm. talking about different things that are specific to Zambia. So that mentality also rubbed off on me. So okay. I'd say Zambia and Botswana um, the most. Yeah. The most. Yeah. Okay, so you've opted to take people that are close to you on your musical journey, Tio and Mwanje. Mm-hmm. How does having people that that close affect your relationships with them and the way you do your music um musically it's a plus for me to have my family um experience what i'm experiencing with me Mm. usually you know you you do your thing something happens and you're trying to explain this to people and they don't really get it because they're not on that experience with you so it's been easier to share my musical experience with my family Mm. um as their boss <laughs> that will always be something different because then there's time where i'm talking to Mwanje as my sister i'm talking to Mwanje as her boss and, right. and so you know i'm always pushing in either state for you know my family to be the best that they are mm. you know we'll have rehearsals and the band is like yeah we got it and i'm like we're gonna have mm. seven more so mm. this is in your skin <laughs> you yeah. know what i mean so when you're right. playing stuff like last and or the opera house and their nerves involved mm. you're still playing what we have rehearsed in because it's in your skin and right. no one can shake you and move you uh, because you know your music so there will be times where it's boss sampa and then there will be times where it's ah friend mm. so mm. and they understand that, uh, they understand but that's also a them question um but <laughs> yeah it, it helps me in, in both ways to have my family experience mm. this with me but also to be able to push my family to come with me mm. okay you know yeah so yeah yeah let's talk about the grammys because this conversation always the pops grammys. up 
Yes, mm. it, it always pops up. When is Zambia gonna get a Grammy? You were nominated yeah. for a Grammy last year's uh, last year's edition. How oh, was it, I? Uh, how does it feel to you know to be the first Zambian to ever be? Uh, you know, nominated oh, for the award. Yes, <laughs> yes. That's so. Angelique's Grammy. Yeah. <laughs> You're um, proud of it. <laughs> I know, I know. She's uh, the legend. Angelique Kijo uh, won her Grammy for her album Mother mm. Nature, which was beautiful. Mm -hmm. I was a featured artist on mm -hmm. that album. Um, but you know, it's Mrs. Angelique's mm. thing. You yeah. know, if you know the work and commitment that goes into making an album, into making sure the theme is is the sa the producers, every the features, it's a lot of work. Mm. So, I as a feature will humbly say that that's Angelique's mm -hmm. um, Grammy. But I'm happy to be involved um, in it, and it's huge. And hopefully, we can start saying we want our own Grammys. Right. Well, they do say an artist's life changes after they get nominated for a Grammy. Yeah. Can you confirm that? I mean, it's Angelique's <laughs> um, You're involved. I mean, I've, I've been touring this whole year. I haven't, I haven't really stopped to see the effects mm. uh, of that. But um, yeah, when when the Grammy says something the great, I'm sure uh, I will, I will mm. see that. Hmm? Okay. Yeah. All right. Uh, well, you did a track on Angelique Kijo's album uh, after she saw your performance on NPR's <laughs> Tiny Desk concert. Uh, what was it like getting that call from an African icon? And Jeez. what lessons have you picked up from um, working with her? The funny thing is it was a DM. It wasn't a call. Mm. So it was a DM on Instagram, which is wild because I didn't think she uses Instagram like that. Because mm. like I equivalent her. Mm. Like she's she's a mom. She's my mom. Yeah, right. My mom's not on Instagram. <laughs> <laughs> this can't be Angelique. This mm. is the publicist. Right. Um, and yeah, she DM'd me, which was wild to me. She's a huge inspiration an inspiration to my parents and an inspiration to me so it's mm. a generational thing um she's also an artist who's not afraid to push her art in mm. her own way and be edgy and be provocative and push her music because it's what she feels like expressing mm. which i've always loved and she's been a huge inspiration so to get that was like a, a beautiful stamp of approval from someone who inspires you mm. and then on top of that to be asked to be on an album is wild yeah mm. is wild and i remember being in the studio for as above so below and we were doing a song let me be great Mm. And we were thinking of whose voice is powerful enough to like push this. And it's just like DM Angelique Kijo. Mm. Thanks. Mm. And it, it just became this exchange where I recorded for her song mm -hmm. and then recorded uh, my verses for Let Me Be Great and sent them both. Oh. And I was like, here's your verse, man. Here's my song. <laughs> I need and my trying, to, <laughs> trying to do a, a, young, a young sneaky. Mm. But you got to take the opportunities when mm. they come and be like, okay, this person sees the greatness in me. So they see, you know, the music I'm trying to push and what I'm trying to say. Mm. I must be worthy. Mm. And, you know, you push your own music as mm. well. So that was, that was beautiful and that was huge. And obviously beautiful things have come from Let Me Be Great and, and, and people love it. So that's, that's amazing. Yeah. Speaking of Let Me Be Great, obviously, Angelique is on that song. Um, you know, uh, and the song also is on the soundtrack of FIFA 23. I just got a message from a friend of mine that said, I turned on my PS5 for the first time, played my, <laughs> my FIFA 23, and it gave me goosebumps to hear, yeah, yeah. Uh, you know, Sampa on FIFA 23. Mm -hmm. But if, uh, FIFA is a football yeah, video game yeah. by EA. And, of course, this isn't the first time that you've appeared on a FIFA soundtrack. But yeah. just how much of a milestone is this for you? I mean, it's... I Working with Angelique alone is a huge milestone for me. Mm -hmm. So that's that's beautiful. But um with FIFA, yeah, I mean am I a gamer? Gamer? Yeah. No. <laughs> <laughs> but to know that, you know, mm. there's another avenue that people can connect with the music is is, is dope for me. So mm. that's huge. That's huge. Mm. Yeah. Ah, okay, we we're gamers. We're gamers. Yeah. We're big gamers. So, <laughs> yeah. so that's it's a that's big like, thing. It's for a us. big big that's thing. Dope. Yeah. That's really dope. All right, so you have a show coming up in zambia yes i do that many can say is long overdue like i, mean, I know my sister is a huge fan of you she's like i can't wait to see her perform oh, live so tell us the plans you have for that and what zambians can pick from it after coming to watch you perform i mean just how you know the stage is an extension of your music and your album Mm. You know, it doesn't just stop there and you release the music. You continue the story onto the stage. Right. And I've been such a, um, I, I love telling stories. And so, you know, theatrically, the performance is going to be 
pretty huge. Mm. Uh, we did sort of the same theme for our Australian shows, the Afro Future show, mm -hmm. and it's a huge theatrical show. We have our dancers there. Um, we have lighting, we have visuals, and mm. we're very big on live music and making sure we're actually playing uh, the music to you. Right. So it's going to be a huge performance and a good step in showing how we can go with our live performances here and around the world. So it's going to be really exciting and mm. i can't wait for people to see it i have done a show before in zambia but it's it's nice to come back and do one in a bigger scale mm. um i do know it's a rainy season right about now so we can't really do anything on the outside and make it like real festival like i would have liked to mm. but um i'm really excited for for this mm. show and, and then bringing this different perspective to the zambian audience so it'll be amazing so is that live performance in your mind when you're making your music like do you visualize that um no because the raps are not raps that you can <laughs> rap like so obviously i don't envision mm. myself um musically though i it's always cinematic mm. uh so that really translates well on stage right but I'm not really thinking about that until I get on stage or until we're like, okay, let's take this mm. and now transpose mm. it to something that you can put on stage. Right. So, yeah. Oh, okay. You've achieved a lot in your music, you know, musical career. And saying, you know, we need Zambians like, uh, more Zambians like you to make strides like you is not, uh, you know, an understatement. What advice would you have for local artists that look at what you've achieved and want to emulate you? Oh, don't emulate me. <laughs> that's that's the first advice. Yeah. Um, I think I I I I I really push myself to be unique in my own story, uh, versus trying to be somebody else. Um, mm. again, we were talking about that global view. You can be the best in your school, but what you really want to be is the best everywhere. Right. Um. I know hip hop is one of those competitive things. So my ethos is more of being the greatest version of myself mm -hmm. anywhere I am at. So for young, young people, it's definitely have a more global perspective on your music. Uh, doesn't mean you have to change who you are. Doesn't mean you have to change your language or your style. I mean, never forget has already proved that. Mm. Um, you want to tell your story on a bigger avenue. You want to make sure your story is heard all over the world make that a goal for yourself don't stop once you get to one point mm. you know you want this to be something that's global so keep pushing till that's the thing mm. you know that's the theme uh stay unique to your story um you don't have to change who you are how you speak your language your culture that is pretty unique in a world that has everyone trying to look the same act the same speak the same mm. your unique story will stand out in that um, have a beautiful team around you who understands your vision and is willing to push that vision with you. That's from management to booking agents to accountants right. <laughs> to everybody in between. Um, there is no I in team. And a lot of you know the opportunities I've had is because I've had a team that understands the standard that I want to set and how far I want to push myself. Okay. Um, those are some of the goals that, you know, I've, I've learned across my career, yeah. Okay, pretty sound advice there. Mm. Thank you so much for joining us this morning. Thank you for having me. Yeah, all And right. I'm waking up right now. So <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we appreciate you being thank here. You, and uh, all the best in your future endeavors. Thank you so much. All right, we've been speaking to Sampa the Great here on the Red Hot Breakfast. How about we close off with this one? It's called Borna from the album As Above, So Below by Sampa the Great. <laughs>